All right, we good? Live. It's Todd Cooperwriter with Esoteric. Thanks for everybody joining us uh, tonight. We have a very special guest in the house, and we've got a lot of uh, guests that come out to join us uh, as well. Tonight, we've got uh, Matt Mormon from Obsessed Garage. He's been in here all week uh, working on his uh, new Porsche GT3 RS. Um, so we wanted to bring everybody uh, in. Matt's been filming a bunch of videos all week. Um, a tremendous amount of information. I know that you've got one or two of them uh, up uh, online on his Obsessed Garage uh, account. Uh, so make sure you go in uh, and check those out as well because it'll be a tremendous amount of, uh, of information. So having said that, um, Matt, you know, he's been uh, a friend of the business for uh, a little while now. I figure we kind of start off talking a little bit about the relationship between, you know, us and our two companies and how we got to this point of sitting here in front of the camera and these people uh, today. So, Matt, welcome. It seems like, it really hasn't been that long, but it feels like, feels like I was here like like 10 years ago. Yeah, know? yeah. I've been a part of the esoteric family for a while. And I, th I think where I found you guys is somebody made a comment on a video about Gion mm -hmm. and that, that I, I would really like Gion and the packaging of it. And so I started Google searching and you guys at the time were the, you know, they were the exclusive you know, US yep. distributor of Gion. Yeah. And so I bought, I think, Trim and View and I called and I talked to, uh, I think it was Zach that I talked to yep. at the time. Uh, and then I started buying all kinds of stuff from the store. And then uh, right in that very first, I remember the very first time I went into online the store, I saw there was an elite detailer academy. Yep. And I'm like, shoot, that's like right up my alley. And, uh, and then I started thinking about, um, man, how am I going to get there? And do I, you know, do I want to pay the cost to do that? Because it's, it's not cheaper. You know? and, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to have to get a flight and a hotel and come up here and do it. But man, I think I could probably, I was just guessing, but I yeah. thought, and I could probably learn a lot. I didn't know you, I didn't know Dan, I didn't know really anybody. I just, the website was, just spoke to me, just, mm -hmm. just felt right. And so then I booked the training, came up here, and uh, learned a lot. And uh, learned a lot that, about me, uh, I can't keep the darn pad flat, saving my life. <laughs> I think I've gotten better though. I've learned to stop pulling with that, you know, with, with, my, with my trail hand. Yeah. Just keep the pressure Lead on with the front. front. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I ended up here. And then, of course, had the opportunity with the GT3 that yeah. I picked up in Cincinnati. And, and it was like, it was like the skies parted. I'm like, this is the best thing ever. Let me call the guys and see if I could convince them on a week's notice to come yeah. in here and do 88, 90 hours worth of man hours to get this car to where it's at. Yeah, so especially considering we're usually booking four to six weeks out, and <laughs> right. you know Matt calls us up and you know wants to get uh, in here, and he kind of talked about the, the idea for this project. We thought, hey, this could be. So really sorry cool. to any of you guys if you're esoteric customers and you got bumped. <laughs> Promise, we're changing the world here. This is for the good of the community, the detailing community, yeah. right? And right. I, I think as this week has, has gone on too, we've ended up with a lot more video, a lot more content than than you know either you or I thought we might be getting. Yeah, I, I don't, I didn't really know. I didn't expect you to be in the video. So thanks for doing that. I mean, the, to get you to come and, and uh, do, <laughs> I got you. I'm the only guy that can convince Todd to come in and do manual labor. I'm bossing him around like, <laughs> hey, Todd, I need you over here. I'm going to have you work uh, on this. And Yeah, and, ne but, never mind. I might not be able to get up tomorrow morning because my back's been hurting <laughs> me so much. And you had me working on a bumper uh, earlier, but yeah, you know, it's all yeah, good. Sorry about that. But it's, again, we're changing the world here, people. This is, this is good stuff. Good, good stuff. Yeah, and it's, I mean it's awesome that, that we got to take from last year was it June of, of last year I believe that, that mm -hmm. you came June uh, for 16. training. Yep. Um, and then keep that relationship, build that relationship uh, from from then until now. You know we've watched uh, we've watched you grow, you've watched uh, us grow, and we've helped each other uh, along the way. So having the opportunity to do something like this where. We're working together on a project for the same, you know, goal, right. and it's something that that's right up our alley. I mean, we're Porsche people here. Uh, I've got the 991.2 Turbo S myself, so mm -hmm. you know, hearing that you had the the GT3 RS um, coming in, I mean, it was it, it was really really uh, a cool opportunity, and then to be able to go to the level that you're going, so where we can showcase. You know, everything that, that we specialize mm -hmm. in. and uh, Yeah, you guys are so good because, I mean, 
I'm a, I classify, classify myself as a professional grade consumer, right? A yeah. professional grade DIYer. And, and with that, uh, you know, there's, you know, some of my message is, you know, I'm learning, <clears throat> I'm figuring this stuff out. Yep. And, and, and some people in the industry or some, you know, there's, there, there's a threat that I guess a DIYer could pose. And you guys have been so, so great about being gracious and hosting me in here. And, and I, I think that we can, we can together, I think we can do really cool stuff. At, yeah. Because some guys want to do it themselves, some don't. And, and, and sharing what we have to go through to get this yeah. thing looking like it does, it's not easy. I mean, it's a lot of work. And so you guys allowing me in here, I think is really powerful to do it together and to critique me and, and to, to, to really critique the audience, critique the people that are watching us do this stuff. Well, it, it works out because you and I have uh, a little bit of a similar story. You know, when I started out doing this, I was doing it as a, a, a part-time gig out of my garage and I immediately started documenting everything I was doing and writing articles and, and discussing how to go about doing this and how to get the most mm -hmm. out of a product and how to get uh, the best uh, results out of it. And you know, I probably wrote 150 you know, articles and you started off uh, with, uh, with doing videos and mm -hmm. you're doing the same thing. You're, you're pulling people along and, and trying to educate them about processes and about products, right. what works for you, what you like and why. And I've done uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the same. Mm -hmm. So for the two of us to be able to get together and, and, and work um, on this project with the end goal of educating people about, about things. You know, for instance, you, know, you weren't a paint protection film guy coming in to, uh, well, to we'll, this whole deal. We'll see how it, that time goes. Still, uh, <laughs> time still has to go by before we figure it out, but um, you know, you'll be able to then educate others about right. what to expect, what not to expect, what's, you know, what's reality of it, um, you know, what are the, the pluses and, and the minuses, and, right. and that's what we enjoy doing, is we enjoy um, spreading the knowledge and the information to whether it's a do-it-yourself or uh, another professional detailer out there. Yeah, because I think everything in this game, in this detailing industry or in this in detailing process is, you know, there's there's not a manual. There's not like a, here's the recipe. Yeah. There's, there are processes and there's things that, it, that, that there, are, there are multiple ways to do things. And, you know, clear film is one of those things that... Uh, I don't think I've ever said I'm 100% against it. Maybe everybody in here will, 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 will say that, that I have. It's that I prefer un, unfilmed paint. Yep. You know, and I think we probably all do. You know, yeah. if you have a choice of a, you know, a waxed, perfected panel and a coated paint protection film panel, you're going to choose the waxed panel. But there's a trade-off there. There's a trade-off on both sides. You know, one may look a little better yep. than the other. But then you drive through the mountains, you go hit the racetrack. Yep. What you know? What what what's the result? And on a car that's so expensive that if you have to repaint a panel, it's tainted. You know, it changes the value of it. I think that's what's really pushed me over to ed the edge. And I'm you know, Dan, it's just fantastic work. So I mean, I, I think a lot of the people here maybe even you know were questioning which panel's been done. Right. You know, unless you really get up in there and look for an edge. Uh, it, it it does look fantastic, yep. and 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 so I'm excited to, to to sort of experience it and see how it goes, and decide if it's something that I would put on all of my cars. I probably wouldn't put it on all of them because it is very expensive to do yep. to do right. Yep. I mean, we're halfway through the car, and we're a week into this. You know, yeah. it's it's a lot. Yeah, of work. it's a it's a very time consuming uh, process uh, to do. You know, there, there are people out there that, that may go out and do a, a full front end in a day. Well, we're going to take three to four days mm -hmm. to do that same process because we want the installation to be very difficult to see. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were just having a conversation with a couple of guys looking at my car over there, and it's really hard to tell that it's got any kind of mm -hmm. paint protection film uh, on and it. And the only well. way to do that <clears throat> is to invest the time. Also, also have a talent to yeah. do it, but to invest the time, give it time to set up so you can, you know, Dan was teaching me about, you know, letting the film sort of set up and then come and do the edges after the fact. Yeah. And just those little steps, taking those little extra measures can make a big difference in the outcome. Yeah. You know, which is why if I'm going to do it, I want to come and do it here. You know, yeah. I want to do, do it with the best. Well, that, that and the, the paint. Uh, protection film itself, you know, we talked about it's a lot of different grades of it, just like every other kind of thing that you can get into. 
And, <clears throat> you know, you were fortunate enough to have representatives from SunTech come in here so crazy, for yeah. a so visit cool. and, and talk you through it. I mean, what, what did you kind of pick up from, from uh, those conversations? I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's just awesome to like, the, the SunTech's driving or flying in here and that's the relationship with you guys. Yep. And then obviously the, the viewers to get the information out there. But yeah, they, they, um, they set my mind at ease on a lot of the questions that I had, you know, a lot yep. of questions I had that, you know, that, that, that like we talked about one of the things that, that was really powerful to me is when I'm talking to Jacob and he's telling me he's, he's extremely technically proficient in the product. And yet I was talking about doing the headlights on the, on the RS and he didn't BS me. You know, he didn't just say, look, this is the hundred percent. Everything's good. He's like, look, there's, you know, there's give and take here. It's plastic. Our film is designed for paint. Many use it on plastic. Many have had a lot of success with plastic, mm -hmm. but I can't guarantee you anything. And so I thought that was great that they were willing to give us honest information. You know, yep. give us the, 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 the yin and the yang, the pro, pros and the cons. And so uh, I was really impressed with that. And the, the window film looks great. Um, so we, we did SunTech CIR, a ceramic tint. Uh, on that, uh, and um, and so that that you know that I think I have never done SunTech anything in yep. my life, and so uh, I, I wouldn't say I was apprehensive, but I came into it for one of the very few times in my life, not really knowing. Like I hadn't done a bunch of research on am I going to do Ultra or what's the other the other version? Um, what is it? C. C. Yeah. Yeah. So so I I wasn't sure, uh, and but I but they you know when they sort of dump a knowledge, I'm like, well, whatever you guys think, I'll, I'll do that. So that, I think that speaks volumes if I'm willing to let go of it. That yeah. They, they know what the heck they're talking about. Yeah. And so. and and like you said, yeah, we do have a fantastic relationship with them, and, and yeah. we have for uh, for quite some time. They support what what we do here because they know that we're looking at things completely different than mm -hmm. most of the people uh, out there, and you know we push it to the nth degree and you know you're talking about Dan and, and his talents you know when he came on here <clears throat> he knew that, that he had to take it uh, under his own wing you know it was going to be his baby and, and he needed to bring the paint protection film installation level that we do up to the reputation that we've built in the detailing industry mm -hmm. so that you know when you come in for, for either kind of service you know you're going to get top of the line right. service uh, uh, on both accounts. Well, it's going to be interesting to see once you get it all done and, and get back down there to Florida. You know me, and, I won't and, pull any punches, yeah. man. I'm, I'm going to lay it on you. Yep. Uh, so that's, that that's... freaking Dan, man. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, for, for, fortunately, uh, I, I'm pretty confident you won't have many opportunities Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's going to be great. And we you know, spent some time doing the, the coding on it and stuff. So I, I, think, I think that I'm going to have to eat some words. Yes. Yeah. I'm willing to do that, you know. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm following the sword for the good of the, the detailing world, right? Yeah. Yep. No, no, I'm going to have to eat some words, I think, and um, that's I'm happy to do that. You know, yep. If it's better, it's better. If it's good, yep. it's good, and that there's there's not much I can say other than right now it looks pretty darn good. Right. <laughs> no, right. So. Yeah. Well, look forward to to being done and all back together, and and uh, and really, see, it's going to be hard to tell that's on there. So the process. <clears throat> um, you know, we did a normal decontamination. Like we washed the car, mm -hmm. did a normal de decontamination, and you know, people, lots of comments, and lot, I think everybody here gets it. But new car, and we're out. Some people don't even think you need to wash it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so we're out washing it, then we're decontaminating, decontaminating it, and I'm stealing your um, uh, chemically and mechanically. Yep. I like that. Yep. Yeah, that's good. That's real good. <laughs> so I'm gonna steal that. So we, you know, we, we decontaminated the car, new car. Yep. And, and shoot, the thing was bleeding iron, right? And so we, you know, we went through that process and then polished. So how much, how much paint do you think we removed on the hood, you know, in order to get the defects out? It was pretty, I mean, we had some. Yeah, pretty yeah, we had, we had to stuff. go, we had to go pretty heavy on uh, the hood because of the sandy marks and stuff uh, from the factory. You know, we probably removed six to eight microns on uh, on the hood, whereas on the sides were probably maybe three microns that we had to remove. And so we have a brand new car, a well, 700 mile car, <clears throat> uh, with marks right from the factory. Yep. 
and and we had to remove some paint to do that mm -hmm. uh, and and so what do we we were measuring what like 1 110 115 something yep. 115 microns we removed six or eight yep so of 115 microns, how much of that is clear? I mean, a clear coat out of that, you're probably 35 to 40 microns okay. of. Uh, so we of removed coat. a good 15 percent of yeah. that. Yep. In order to correct it. Yep. And so there was this balance, this give and take, and 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 that I felt confident because we were going to be putting clear film over it that we're going to remove the defects, go a little bit more aggressively with with a. I thought was an old school serb buff. I thought those things were like, we thought we got rid of those in the 90s. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, the, 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 we call it the sledgehammer as you learned in our uh, class last year because if you need to go something really heavy, mm -hmm. that's what you reach for. Typically speaking, we go for a lesser aggressive method, you know, remove as little material as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but we know we had some really deep defects. You know, we had that one great big scratch that we were only able to reduce. We weren't able to get rid of completely. Mm -hmm. But all those deep sanding marks from the factory and, uh, on a harder paint, it just required uh, a real heavy uh, process to, to get it done. And it, it, it worked really well. So do you, here, do you normally do two-step? Like, do you normally do a compound and a, and a and a, um, a finish? It, it depends on what the customer wants. Um, you know, if it's something that comes in, it's, it's not that bad a condition, we're typically just gonna do a one step. You know, a car that comes in, it's a little bit beat up, the customer wants it to look as close to perfect as we possibly can, we're gonna do a multi-stage polish. Mm -hmm. Big difference in the price between uh, the two because the multi-stage polish just requires Yeah, I figured we had, time. we have about 15 hours, man hours into, just that pretty simple two-step polish, yep. 15, 16 man hour yeah. or something like that. That's just polishing. That, that's not decontamination or any of the other right. time. Right. And, and, and that's not bad compared to, you know, I haven't looked at it uh, yet. We've got a, I mean, the camera you can't see, but we've got a, a 488 uh, Ferrari sitting back here. And those notoriously come from the factory. I mean, there's just horrible sanding marks everywhere, buffer marks everywhere. You know, you can easily spend 20, 30 hours on one of those. Mm -hmm. brand new. Uh, one of our videos on La Ferrari, you know, we spent, I think, 42 hours on, on that, you know, $2 million car. People think they, they come perfect. <laughs> now, the more hand-built a car is, the more work is required. The more people touch it. it yeah. Yep, yep. The more, you know, they, they feel they need to get in there with sander and buffer and, and it just all goes bad. So we're going to do, so we've <laughs> done half the car roughly with, with clear film. So we did the SunTech Ultra. Right. Yep. So, and then we followed. We're following with uh, with kamikaze, kamikaze yep. coatings. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and and so we're doing Mayabi and ISM on top of that. That's that's that that's the, the plan, right? Yep. So. Yeah, which is going to be the the same thing that I've got on uh, uh, on my car, and we do on a lot of cars where people want protection and they want to get the best looks they possibly can using the two formulas See, that's, together. That's been my struggle is that, you know, I, I'm such a fan of a certain type of look and uh, maybe this is preconditioned in me, but I like a, a, a look, the look of like a Carnuba wax and the, the obvious deficiency there is the longevity, the yep. protection capability. And I've rebelled against a lot of these coating companies because it, I've said it looks weird. It looks different. It's a mm -hmm. different style, a different look. And, and that's why I've, I've sort of decided to adopt, you know, the kamikaze stuff. Yeah. ISM specifically because, I mean, you're telling me it looks more wax-like, so yeah. I'm hoping it does. Yeah, it, it definitely does. The, the, if you look at Miyabi by itself, it has more of a, a brilliant shine to it mm -hmm. that to some people looks synthetic compared to what a wax would. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the ISM has a warmer Carnuba kind of glow to it, um, which is really hard to explain unless you're in the cars and, and you've seen detailed uh, vehicles what that difference mm -hmm. uh, is. but. You know, it gives you more of that kind of wet look as opposed to just a, 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 a real harsh shine about it. And then when you combine the two together, it gives a completely different look, in, in my opinion, more of that wet look that hmm. you may be interested in with a, with a, a high-end wax. And waxes, yeah, they're, they're great. I mean, we got a whole drawer full of them over there that uh, you saw yeah, we never... I'm going to steal we, that we, crystal rock. Yeah, we, you ne we never use, but... <laughs> It takes a lot of time. They can be finicky. They're only going to last you about a month. You're going to be constantly out there waxing, whereas you put a coating on it, it's going to hold a, a gloss level for years. It's not going to drop off immediately like a wax or a sealant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to help with self-cleaning properties on it. You know, those are the those are the really big things 
that you, you get out of a coating. You know, I can drive my car in the rain. I'm going to drive that car over there uh, in the winter. The cleanup will be relatively easy because of that coating uh, that's, that's sitting on there. If I try to do that with a wax or sealant, you know, I'm going to have a tremendous amount of work come springtime. So it sounds like this is going to be my public announcement at the end of my YouTube channel now because I don't have anything to do anymore. No more <laughs> polishing, no more waxing. Shoot, I mean, what the heck am I going to do? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll find some other I'm going to have to start, yeah, start doing drifting or something like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> Drifting stinky old cars or something. Yep. I don't know. Uh, so, so then we did uh, we did wheels, wheels and tires, and we mm -hmm. had some goop on the tires that still still hasn't come off. Uh, it's yeah. going to take a while. Um, but we did, uh, and this is something that I didn't do and didn't realize to do, and now I'll probably do from here on out is to do Mayabi first. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I did the stance, the rim specific coating. Uh, which I never really believed in rim specific coating, but uh, it makes perfect sense that you would do a harder base coat and then a higher temp coat on top of that. So yeah. um, set the put the Mayabi on, and then when I was doing it, I was waiting like three hours of curing time in between because that's just kind of what I've been conditioned yeah. to do. And we ended up waiting what an hour and and yep. then and putting the second coat on. Yeah, yeah. Also put the stance on the uh, calipers. On the, on the yeah. calipers, yeah. Yeah, because it's high temp and all the heat that's built up in those cal uh, calipers provide you drive that thing the way it's intended to be driven. I won't. Yeah, I definitely yeah. won't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe 30% of how it's okay. supposed to be driven. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm wound tight, you know, so yep. tightly, I should say. So I'm going to leave the car here, mm -hmm. which is not easy for me to do. Right. Uh, and Dan's going to finish up the, the paint protection film. I'm actually kind of I'm kind of disappointed I don't get to see him struggle with that giant piece that has to go all the way from the A pillar down the C pillar. Yeah, that and, whole big area yeah, down yeah. through there is all yeah. one big piece. I'm expecting I'm hoping there's video so I can do voiceover of making fun of Dan while, while he's doing that. That's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be gold. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll bleep out some words that he may say during that process. I've seen it. <laughs> so we're, that that'll be done. I mean, what's the expectation on that? I mean, it's probably going to take uh, another week to finish the car. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not a straight week of labor, but probably. I mean, we have what another thirty hours worth of work on the thing. Yeah, yeah. you've you, you've got a strong several couple of days of just laying film. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you've got days of tucking and trimming and all the customization that, that comes along with it. And then mm -hmm. you've got reassembly of you know things that we've taken apart and, and then the coating process. You said this thing had 1,700 miles on it, right? You're going to leave 700, here for a couple. yeah. No, 1,700. 1700 when I, took a back to I took a picture of the odometer. <laughs> it's at 8, 8, uh, 812, you know. Okay. I noticed Dan over there trying to disconnect the battery, so I couldn't get that picture done in time, but yeah. No, uh, no, no more miles. Uh, I'm never going to drive it. It's just going to stay like this. I'm just yeah. going to look at it. Well, that, that brings up a really good point. I'm glad uh, you, you said that. I, I picked up on a comment, uh, somebody on your video that you put on, on washing the other day. And he's like, you know, I don't worry about that stuff. I just go drive my car. A lot of people think incorrectly that a highly detailed car and a driver, they're mutually exclusive and they, they can't be one and the same. Right. And that's not the case at all. And, and what we do, you know, detailing, which we need to come up with a different word for it, but detailing is about the protection aspect. Granted, we're making the paint look better and all that fun stuff, but we're protecting it so that it can be driven in whatever kind of uh, weather, whatever kind of circumstance you want, mm. you can enjoy it. And then when you come back, the cleanup is, is easy. You know, once again, going back to my car, I take it to a track day, beat the hell out of it at uh, 155 miles per hour uh, all day long, come back, it's just a quick cleanup, and I can take it to any show and it's gonna look uh, you know, as good or better than anything else that's there. That Z06 uh, orange one that's sitting outside, if uh, none of you have looked at, we worked on that car two and a half years ago and did a very high level correction protection film. You know, Chuck just got back from his second cross country trip in it, mm -hmm. and it looks like we just finished that up. So with you in this car, with everything that we've done to it, uh, you might not be able to get your mind off of not wanting to drive it, but no, you can go I, out. I'm joking. Yeah, right, you I'm going to go out and beat the do, crap yeah, out of it. Yeah, do whatever you want with it, and mm. it's going to be quick cleanup processes. You know, you can enjoy the car, 
and you're not yeah, spending all that that's time what i'm cleaning. excited about because a lot of times when you're out spiritedly driving you're you're bumper to bumper you know with mm -hmm. with the guys that you're with and then you're just getting <clears> pelted <throat> and while you know, and this is the main reason why i decided to do this to do clear film and to put a coating on the on the car is that uh, the the cleanup after that is like heartbreaking because you're you know and 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 the Porsche paints pretty hard so there's not huge paint chips yep, yep. but there's a patina that's developed that just it hurts my soul you know yeah, it's yeah. like as much as I love the 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 you know the the rear quarter panel right there at the top with it, when there's nothing on it other than wax and you know and or a, you know it's a polymer sealant I think that I think that Again, I think I'm going to have to eat some words, and I think I'm going to have to get used to just doing this sort of process of the car. I, I'm I'm probably going to enjoy the, the the experience a lot more because right. of it. So the you know the, exp the in in the past the expense of it was something that that turned me off. I was afraid. Yep. I wasn't you know to to I was stretching to get the cars I was getting, and then to spend another two or three or four or five thousand dollars because if I want to do it right, I'm going to have to pay the you know the best to yep. do it, and and unfortunately that's not cheap. Yeah. And the reason it's not cheap is expertise and just massive amounts of time. Right. You know, the t I just see it, the time that it takes to do this is insane. Right. Well, you know, talking about the investment and stuff that's in it, <clears throat> you know, you can look at it a couple different ways. You, you make the investment on the front end, you can enjoy the car a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and then you can, you can hold a resale value when you go to get rid of it, or the investment comes at the back end that you're not really taking that good care of it, and then you lose a lot of money in the value uh, at the end. For yeah, me, see, it, see, I would take really good care of it and then choose not to use it as much as I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. And that's a shame. You know, and then it shouldn't be that way. Yeah, yeah, you're losing out on the investment because you're not doing anything. Right, like yeah, you're just wasting money, right. Yeah, right. So, so the word to anybody listening and anybody out there, spend the money with us and have it done <laughs> right when you get it and uh, go enjoy your car. I'll expect <clears throat> a, a sizable commission for that. Uh, <laughs> no problem, no problem. So anyway, I, I'm so humbled to be here, man. I mean, this is, this is crazy. I mean, I started this YouTube channel just as a way to get out of my own head. Yeah. And I was in complete obscurity, doing everything on my own by myself. And I started it just like it wasn't intentional. Yeah. It was just, well, this is a way I thought like every good engineer would think. And the therapist said, look, bro, you got to make some friends. And I sat down, I got a sheet of paper. How could I make friends the most efficient way possible? Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, I could start journaling my car. That's an easy way to do it. And, uh, and then started the YouTube channel. And now here I am. And we're, you, know, you guys opened up your doors. I'm guessing you don't let everybody come in here and do what I did. Yeah, it's like, no. you know, I'm going to lunch with you guys and hanging out and, you know, and I have free reign of whatever. I'm digging around in the cabinets looking for an applicator. And, hey, where's that towel? And it's, it's been so awesome, man. This is, this is top top two three weeks of my life it's yeah awesome. no it, it's been it's been great to uh, having you here you know granted it disrupts the flow uh, a little bit but we're kind of used to that because we're we're filming videos on a weekly basis yeah. and you know we you have to tell the guys back here you stop polishing for the next hour because we're filming and we can't <laughs> have that going on silence so, yeah so right. we're, we're 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 used to uh, that but having the opportunity to to be a part of it and you know, perhaps introduce ourselves to, um, you know, the, the, the crazy amount of followers and stuff that, uh, that you have is, is obviously big for us. Crazy is the right word. Yeah, most yeah. of us in here have some, you know, yeah, some level of crazy that's uh, off the charts, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, which is why a lot of us got into this, you know, business or how we got Passion, into this business. Right. And, yeah, you know, heck, I, I walked away from a 22-year career with great 401k and, and paid vacations and a steady ch uh, paycheck to decide I want to wash cars for, right. uh, for a living. Um, but, <laughs> I think uh, it's a little bit more than washing cars these days. Huh? Yep, yep. Um, but no, it, it, it's been you know, fantastic uh, having you here and you know, helping you along with, uh, with this project. We're all, you know, first and foremost, we are car enthusiasts here. Yep. Uh, and anybody that, that I've hired on um, over the years they've had to have that going. We, you know, we don't just hire anybody coming in here. So, you know, whether it's you or anybody uh, uh, out here coming in, you're dealing with an enthusiast. Right. Uh, in, in, That's in very the whole clear. Thing. Yeah. We're, we're sharing a passion 
with you. I am going to expect <clears throat> next time I come here no, to have no one have nibs on their tires. <laughs> that is my expectation. Uh, yeah, and if you don't need, get that, watch through the videos that we've done this week. I need, this, uh, I need you guys to step up your game of de-nibbing, <clears throat> no esoteric, that's part of the package. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, ultimate, though, you're probably going to have to pay for that because these guys aren't cheap. You know, you're going to have to do that. <laughs> ultimate new car prep price just went up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, but no, it's, it's been awesome uh, being, being a part of this and then, you know, having the crowd of people and everything coming right. out to, uh, to visit with you and, and see our facility. And yeah. uh, it's, been, uh, it's been good. Cool. Any, any other thoughts on uh, the car, uh, the process, or anything we've went over this week? No, I think I think we got it. I'm worn out, man. I can't wait to get out of here and go back to work. You know, you guys have been working me hard. <laughs> and uh, but but yeah, no, the, I'm I'm psyched. I I still haven't envisioned this car at my house yet. Like yep. the the level of it, the level of paint you know, correction that we've done, and uh, it's 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 hopefully it'll sink in at some point here that this thing's going to show up at my doorstep yeah. in a week or two. My, my guess is that a 2,000-mile a GT3 RS is going to look wonderful uh, uh, in your garage when it, uh, when it gets there. I might need, should I order new tires now? <laughs> have, them, have them there ready? <laughs> Yeah, we can. We, hey, we, we mountain balance tires here too, so uh -huh. you know we can get that taken care of, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Oh, um, well, before we you know close up, I want to go into any kind of. Yeah, I mean, does any, anybody, anybody have any any questions? I don't, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but anything about the car? So you gonna send the Raptor down here? Next? Question was, am I gonna send the Raptor down? Um, I don't know. That's a you good should, question. You should have learned. You should have learned plenty this week. You should be able to knock that thing out yourself. Yeah, I'll probably do it myself because of, uh, and, and that that is well said. Like I, I have improved my skills even more, and that yep. every time you touch a car, I think you improve yeah. your skills. Uh, and so I'll, I'll probably do the Raptor, Raptor myself. Um, if I do keep the S2000, it will be shipped up here though, because that frickin' black paint is a nightmare. <laughs> Just touching it, so I need. Yeah. I would need to get that that wrapped. Uh, we didn't necessarily say we want to deal with that black Honda paint. Well, That's... hey, this is the prerequisite. You know, you're stuck with me now. Yeah. Anybody else have anything before we wrap up? Can you just speak a little bit to uh, partial wrap versus full wrap. Like your thoughts on it, pros and cons. So, question was uh, was partial versus full? Right. To so, me, it's cost, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a huge cost difference uh, between the two. You know, if you're doing a partial, meaning a full front end, um, you know, you're looking at a couple thousand dollars to do that. If you're doing an entire vehicle, you're starting out at about six thousand dollars to do that. And it depends on the vehicle, depends on how much disassembly, depends on how much customization. You know, we're removing bumpers, we're removing door handles, mirrors, all this this kind of stuff. Um, you know, in, in terms of how you're taking care of it, you know, mine, my original plan was to go a full wrap on it, you know, track days, drive it all winter. We just simply ran out of time. We didn't, didn't have the ability uh, to, uh, to do that. Um, but if you want to know that, you know, your, your paint is kept in great condition and you can go out and drive it and not worry about, you know, that rock flying up uh, uh, and hitting you, Full wrap is definitely the way to go. Most of the time, those chips and, and, and things are going to happen on the front end. And, and that's by far what we do most of is full front ends. And, and some people think of partials as that partial front end where you see the line across the hood. Uh, we don't do that. Um, you know, we do all. It's not even an option. We took it off of the list. You know, somebody came in and went, I want to have it done. Okay, we, you know, we can go ahead and do it. Well, but you're going to do mean, everything in your power to talk them out of it. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and a lot of people, they will, they will shy away from paint protection film because they say, well, there's that line across mm -hmm. the middle. That's all. They don't even realize that you can do a full uh, front end. And when you say, yeah, you can do it and you won't see any lines, mm -hmm. that gets people back into the, the paint protection uh, film game, so to speak. Yeah, I, t I try to think about, you know, the, the cost of it and, uh, and, you know, would I do it on a car that maybe wasn't this, because the cost relative to the yep. cost of this car <clears throat> is not as dramatic as, let's say I had a, you know, bought a, an M2 or something right. like that. 
Um, and again, I guess it just depends on what you're looking to, to accomplish. But uh, I'm an all or nothing kind of guy. So I went from having zero clear film to where yeah, do the whole, wrap the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Dan, what about the turn signal lights? We got to get those done. You know, what about, are we going to do the windshield? And he's like, no, yeah. no, no, you can't do the windshield. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so um, I think that, I think that you know, for me, for this car, I think wrapping the whole thing is, it was the, really the only option. Right. Plus, then surface differences. I won't see any difference. If you're that discerning, you know, I think that's the main advantage is seeing the, the, the same, the panels will look the same, and then I won't obsess about it as much. Right. So why don't we ask the audience on YouTube uh, to answer question, ask questions. OK. We can answer a couple more questions here while we'll some questions online. So you can, you can see them? Yeah, we can see them. Okay. Would you guys announce that right now? Yeah, so if, if you guys that are watching that are live, uh, if you'll you know, s submit a question, ask them questions now, and we'll, we'll try to answer them if we have the answer to it. One minute delay, so we'll answer some questions here. Okay. Yeah, while we're waiting for that. Come on, I told you guys, think hard. Give me something good. What, 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 what do you guys got? We have a bunch of introverts in a room here. No one's going to say anything. No one wants to step up. Now, does paint protection film protect much from door dings? Um, it... It can, but that's a, that, that's a tricky one. You know, you, you get hit just right, it doesn't matter what you have on there, you're gonna get the door ding. But what it can do is it can prevent, a lot of times those door dings, you're gonna have both a dent and missing paint on it. So worst case scenario, you still have a dent, you're not missing any paint, and then you know, you have somebody come in, pop that dent out, and you're not having to worry about any of the paint issues that, that come along with it. You know, I, I had some stuff, I had my wife's car in here the other day, and uh, you know, there were some areas where you can tell people open cars into it. I got lucky, all I had to do was polish it out. There was no denning that, that went along, but if I had film on that, that wouldn't uh, have happened. You know, I had film on the front of my older Acura TL. I did a complete bonehead move. I was carrying uh, a ladder from the house out into the garage. And it fell out of my hands, it bounced off of the front end of my car, and had I not had the film on there, it would have just gouged it real bad. It left a couple little scuffs that by hand I was able to polish that out, no, no problems whatsoever. So in some, some instances it can, I mean, really save uh, the situation. In others it's just going to minimize it. Yeah, I've seen some scuffs and things where you know people get hit like from the side and pull the film off, and a lot of times you're yeah, paints you can know. just replace the film yeah. and and uh, you're yeah, good. I was just wondering how does the film tear easy? Like say on bumper ratchets, like bumper scuffs, if somebody nicks it. Uh, no, it doesn't tear that easy at all. If if you if you're hit or something strong enough to where it would tear it, you got other problems that, that you're worrying about. You got some structural damage or something uh, that, that's going on. Yeah, it, I, was, it's, it's, I was yanking on it. I mean, it was it made it about yay before it, it broke. And yeah. then imagine it's, it, it, it's, it's adhering to the, to the bumper, I would guess. It, right. You have to shoot a bullet at it to get through that thing. Yeah. Right, right. And, you know, you're, you're going to get a few things uh, in the film. That's what's there for, to be that sacrificial layer. Uh, on the front end of my car, uh, on the bumper, I mean, there's a a little small little uh, piece out of the film from a track day 150 miles an hour you know, that's going to happen and another little one down at, at the very bottom where i hit a rabbit uh and uh, uh <laughs> left a little mark in there but the nice thing is come springtime peel it off everything's fine underneath put new one uh over top of it and you won't know otherwise if i went to try to have that paint matched for one Good luck. It's it's probably never going to match. And then you know, talking about it's tainted uh, at that point. Uh, yeah, I don't like the tainted car, man. Yeah. Uh, does the film ever like dull over time or like fade? Uh, some films uh, can. The uh, the you know the when you have the guy that offers a two thousand dollar job and then somebody else that offers the thousand dollar job, you're probably going to have film on that thousand dollar job that that that's going to look a lot different. You know, we've tested some films where after a short period of time, it starts getting milky or hazy looking. Um, old films, you know, they yellowed really bad. They got hazy really bad. New films, technologies, even the lesser expensive stuff has gotten uh, a lot better. 
but on these higher quality films, you know, there's a top coat on them, and they even have self-healing uh, attributes to some ex uh, extent. Um, you know, you can get some light scratching in there, the sunshine heated up, and it'll uh, uh, close that back up. It's not going to do it if there's a, a chunk missing out of it. Uh, but provided you take care of it, just like you would paint, you know, we tell people treat it no different than paint, it should stay looking, you know, fantastic for a long period of time. But a lot of what I learned from watching the process, I mean, if you, you know, like this SunTech Ultra, the better films, um, they are pretty stretchable. But if you, if you don't have an expert when you're installing, when you're stretching the film, you can have clarity changes. Yeah. You know, you thin it out wrong or you, you, uh, if you heat it too much. Yeah, you know, or kind of what it does is that adhesive layer underneath it, it disturbs that right. and can leave what looks to be a, a, a stretch mark. And so I, I can imagine that, that you know, let's, let's say you're paying an installer, you know, a couple thousand dollars to do it and imagine that you're 90% through a $300 piece of film panel and the guy's got, you know, four hours into it and then there's an imperfection. Um, that's why I think the install is so important and then a place that I've seen these guys like looking at cars, you know, teching them before, I don't know what you go call it, but before they leave to make sure that all the film, all the clarity looks even. Because it's, 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 it's pretty gnarly. The, the process is, is, is something that if it's not done right, it could really, I certainly wouldn't like it. And I probably wouldn't say anything. I'd just go and hire somebody else to fix it. Like, well, it's, it, it, it's no different than detailing or paint correction. You know, there, there's, yeah. a, there's a very wide range of skill sets there. Mm -hmm. And the same exists with paint protection film. The install is as important as the quality of, uh, of film itself. Right. What else okay. we got? Transitioning to online questions. OK. What are you going to do for the exhaust system? Dundon. So I'll have uh, done. So I've taken the the Dundon exhaust from my GT3. Um, I I had the original prototype, the original Dundon prototype, which is long tube, or actually they're called equal length headers, which eliminates the cap, uh, and then goes into a side muffler delete. You probably can't yep. see on camera. There's this giant 30 pound muffler that's right next to the rear wheel that heats up the the rear tire. So that'll be removed. But I had the original prototype and the the design of how they place the O2 sensors is a little different on the latest the, the latest mm -hmm. version. So I'll have Dundon equal length headers, catless, into the side mufflers. It'll be valved. Uh, and then Dundon has a brand new prototyped center muffler. These center mufflers tend to crack. Uh, it's probably not going to crack for me because I'm not going to go on the track for hours at a time. Yep. Um, it's t the, the center muffler on this is titanium, um, but they're pretty brittle. They're pretty lightweight. So I'll have a full Dundon long tube or equal length headers, catless, side muffler delete into the center muffler. I should have that center muffler in the next couple of weeks. And so probably December, late December, I'll have the Dundon exhaust on the car again. It makes 30-ish horsepower on the RS. Yeah, it should sound uh, uh, good too because proper exhaust systems on these are, are yeah, it's nasty. pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. tried to do, and uh, those who have watched my videos know that my exhaust sagas that you know I had 13 different exhausts on my previous GT3 chasing the best exhaust. Yep. The Dundon is by far the best option. I really didn't want valves because they have a goofy yep. operation. Yep. Like I believe on your turbo, you press the button, the valves are open, they're open. On this, you press the button, the valves do all kinds of weird stuff. Yep. Uh, and unfortunately for drone, you know, valves are, are not an option. You have to have them. Yep. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, repeat the questions when I ask them. Good okay. point. Um, how hard is it to remove PPF after a few years? Uh, question online is how hard is it to remove uh, paint protection film after a couple of years? Uh, that depends a little bit. You know, we have done some some removal of it, uh, removal of other brands. Depending on the adhesive that is used or the brand, that's going to dictate uh, a, a lot. Um, some of them have been easy, some of them not so easy. And, you know, when we're doing it, we're using steam to help loosen up uh, the adhesive because it doesn't heat it up too much. And there, there's also a, a right way and a wrong way of pulling it. Um, I saw Chuck out there. Where's Chuck with his? Uh, he had he had one of his uh, uh, Corvettes that that he tried to take the film and kind of peel it back against itself. And then next thing you know, we had eight hours of uh, adhesive uh, removal that we had to, to do. Uh, but depending on the film, that's going to dictate how uh, easy it is. If it's somebody at home doing it. 
Uh, you probably want to watch a few videos uh, on it to kind of understand. Uh, but, you know, for us, it's not overly difficult, but it is uh, time consuming. You know, you, you have to pay attention and be respectful, uh, mindful of the paint. Are you seeing any cracks and stuff in there? If you go to remove it on an area that maybe got hit real hard, you risk pulling off some paint. Or if somebody wrapped, say, a bumper right after it's been repainted, uh, when it comes time to remove that film, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to remove paint with it. Uh, so anytime we talk to customers about removal, we kind of warn them in advance uh, that, that there's always that chance. If it's a car, they don't really know uh, the history. If it's a, um, you know OEM finish or something, it's, it's usually no problems at all. How do you maintain the film? Question is, how do you maintain the film? Well, uh, film maintenance is no different than paint, really. Uh, you know, people may think because it, it, it's there to protect from rock chips that you can hit it with a Brillo pad or something to clean it up. It can scratch just like paint. It can swirl uh, just like paint. You don't want to use any harsh chemicals on it, just like you wouldn't paint. You know, just a good pH neutral shampoo with it. Um, you know, be mindful of the edges. You don't want to get uh, a pressure washer up real close where the edges are because you can end up uh, uh, peeling them up. Um, you know, if you've got high quality waxes or sealants or coatings that you want to use on them, most of the time that's going to be fine. Uh, the biggest thing that film doesn't like is like petroleum based products. You can get into some staining or premature aging or yellowing uh, in the finish. So stay away from AutoZone kind of products to care for your paint protection film. And as long as you keep in mind that, that I'm going to treat this exactly the same way as I do the paint, uh, then you should be good to go. question is, what do I think of the full racing buckets? Uh, other than getting out of them, they're legit. I mean, they're just right. Like the Germans, it's good that they're, 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 they build these cars for bigger dudes. And, uh, and, and so I don't, bad news is I don't like have to lose a bunch of weight to get in them because mm -hmm. I fit. Uh, but surprisingly on the two hour trip from, from Cincinnati, is not bad. That's the longest time I've spent in them. The other time, other, other than that, I've only been in them for maybe a two or three minutes at a time so uh, and they yeah. look so awesome yeah I, I have to agree on on that one once you're in it and you're driving <laughs> they're not bad they're, yeah. they're spectacular getting in and out sometimes can be a little bit uh, uh and it, challenging it probably wouldn't be so bad but you're worried about jacking them up you know you're worried yep. about messing up the leather or you know damaging it yep. and so now you got a combination of one you can't get out and two you, you don't want to mess up the leather and so i'm gonna have to dial in my process it right now it feels like Think about yourself like getting out of the passenger side of your own car. Like you haven't developed those muscles uh, yeah. to get out. Yeah. But you can just you can get right out of your 911 no problem on, on the driver side. But the passenger side, that's what it feels like to me right now. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. What happens after a couple of years when you need to reapply coating? Do you need to polish again? The question is, uh, what happens after a couple of years with uh, coating a coating on a car? Do you have to reapply uh, again? That's a good question. It's a, a one that we commonly get. Um, it depends a lot on how the person has taken care of it. You know, we have had cars that are taken care of really well. They've followed the maintenance procedures. They've used specific uh, um, products designed for maintaining coatings. You know, Polish Angel uh, Cosmic Spritz or um, Overcoat by Kamikaze or Cure by Gion and, and a bunch of others. Um, so if it's been taken care of well, after a couple years, the only reason that you would have to redo it is sometimes they get some scuffs and scrapes and bumps and bruises like we were talking about uh, earlier today. Or Somebody's walking past contamination, it. Contamination, yeah, paint and, overspray, something like yeah, that. Yeah, th those kind of things. Then you go in and, and repolish it and reapply the coating. But for instance, if that car has been taken care of really well, it looks great, you don't see any kind of signs of, of swirling or, or marring, you can go in and reapply your coating right over top of it uh, at that time. Now that kind of goes into the next kind of conversation which is uh, about longevity. And there's coating companies out there that come up with all kind of crazy um, uh, um, you know, things on how long it will last. I don't care if a coating says it's gonna last 10, 20, 80 years or whatever. A car, if it's used, it's going to get those bumps and bruises and scuffs and things after a couple years. So even if the coating is still good, 
chances are you're going to be repolishing and, and reapplying anyhow. And if you're kind of crazy like us and you want you know, the, the, the best performing coating uh, at all the time, you'll probably be ready to try something new uh, at that time anyhow. My biggest issue is with coatings, are they're, they're more water spotable, right? Mm -hmm. And so I get <clears throat> water spots from a routine rain. It just so happened it was the right conditions for that yep. to happen. Uh, so let's say that I have a, a, a four, well, one panel gets mm -hmm. hit with water spots. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to want to chemically remove those because right? sometimes if you polish them, they'll, it doesn't get rid of them. They'll show back yeah. up. So I, I chemically remove or remove the, the, the water spot. I probably then need possibly to polish as well. Mm -hmm. Can I just hit that panel with, yeah. the, with the coating? Yeah, and, and you know what you want to do first is use a specific like water spot remover designed right. for coatings. Uh, you know, for, for us, Kamikaze has it, uh, Gion has it. And you want to see, you know, if, if that water spot is still at that stage, it's sitting on top of the surface, you need to chemically, you know, break that down and remove it. But if it has gotten to the point where it has gone down into the surface and etched, let's say you're down in Florida, it's 90 degrees, and especially if you got hit with a sprinkler or something mm -hmm. and the sun comes out, you're going to be polishing. That's all there is to it. But let's say it was a panel and you had to do it, you can, you can repolish that area and you can reapply a coating, you know, just blend in that panel, it's a quarter panel or door or something, and mm -hmm. then you should be good to go. Hmm. Any others? Let's do one more and then I gotta pee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. Question for Matt. I see you doing a lot on your cars and trucks. What are you doing for your wife's daily driver? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm selling it, literally. It's a, it's, um, she has a Tahoe. Uh, the question was, what am I doing for my, my wife's daily driver? Because I have all my cars dialed in. Uh, Michelle's car had, uh, I did uh, Seacourts UK on it when I first got it. And I think I've maybe washed it eight times. That was a year and a half ago. And so, you know, there's water spot issues. Um, so it's going to have to be decontaminated. It's going to have to be polished. It's going to have to be recoded. So what I'm probably going to do, maybe mainly just to gain more experience with, with ISM, uh, I'll probably do, uh, I'll probably do like a single step ISM and I'm going to sell it because uh, she's getting my, my Raptor. And my Raptor was, you know, recently dialed in. Uh, we did, we did uh, Secret's uh, TIO2 on that. Um, and, and so the, I think the, the new Raptors are going to get um, Mayabi ISM. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to do any, any, um, any film on that. I may do film around the bottom, right at the bottom of the doors usually get beat up uh, from people getting in and out of the truck or, or you know, the stuff coming off the, the, the front wheel. But the truck's up so high and the whole grill is plastic anyway. Yeah. So I don't notice a lot of chipping on, on my Raptor. But Michelle's getting the Raptor. So the... I guess theoretically I'll maintain that and keep, <laughs> take care of it. Lesson learned is that if you're obsessed, it's hard to maintain a bunch of cars. Yeah. I wish Esoteric was uh, in uh, in Central Florida. I could just drop them off and just keep a running tab. Yeah. Uh, Although I'd can... be broke. I'd probably have to sell cars just to pay for the cars to be maintained. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we, we've heard that from probably 26 different cities around the country. You know, people wishing that we had uh, one of our uh, facilities right yeah. there. But yeah. uh, in the meantime. You can still ship it here. We take cars all the time. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point. Um, I know a lot of people watching you know, my stuff are you know GT3 owners, M3 owners. They're in California. They're in Wisconsin. They're in Florida. It costs me a thousand bucks to ship my car here. Um, so, and and the I, I I would I would do that. And they can help you. Like I, Dan and Todd and and Zach are gonna they're gonna find me. You know, they have people that can get the cars yep. here. And it's really been pretty uneventful. Um, I think even just to ship my car up to Cincinnati and then we're going to ship this car back. Uh, I'm buying Todd's subwoofer, so we're going to get that put in the truck yep. as well. So yep. I will, I will uh, remind you that the, if you do come here, you're going to end up buying a bunch of stuff up front. And, and, uh, but, but shipping the car is not as big of a deal. And I'm wound tightly, like I've said. So. Yeah. So, so, so our, as, as are a lot of our customers who ship things from yeah. all over the country, and we try to make the experience as seamless as possible. I uh, would encourage you to 
hop a flight and come check it out like at the end to take delivery of it. Yeah. You know, take delivery of it, see it get put on the truck and then, you know, spend a day in Columbus. This area is super, super cool too. Yep. Lots of great restaurants and stuff. So make a trip out of it. Or, you know, even better, maybe try to try to make it coincide with the you know, detailing school. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome as well. If I were in, in somebody's shoes who had a new car, like lots of new 991 GT3s and 991.2 GT3s are going to be rolling in. Uh, I would I would you know encourage those guys to get the car here, you know, and 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 get it done like maybe maybe not exactly what we did here, yeah. um, but something to to that level. So. Yeah, and we're kind of anticipating a. A rush on those cars once they start uh, hitting uh, the streets. We're going to have a lot of them in here, and yeah. you know we've really gotten um, involved quite a bit in the Porsche community. And you know the fact that that I've got one, and we're all Porsche fans uh, here at the shop it makes sense. It, yeah, yeah it, it makes sense. We we know the vehicles, we know the owners. Like-minded people tend to gravitate. Yep. So yep, absolutely. Anyway, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, I thought this this is a cool idea that you know, we had to do this sort of live yeah. thing and. Hope that people watching it. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys. Hope I get to meet everybody before before we leave. But this is this is cool. Yeah, no, it's great. Thanks, brother. Absolute pleasure having you here. We Thanks. want to thank everybody for uh, coming out. We want to thank everybody for uh, joining us on a Friday night uh, online. It's been a great thing for us, and we hope to do some more of uh, more of these. Uh, as I say in all my videos, we're constantly updating our YouTube channel with uh, new videos oh, on yeah. uh, detailing products, tools, and techniques. So be sure to uh, subscribe to our channel. And uh, here before long, we've got what we're calling version 2.0. It's going to be coming out uh, that is going to be very heavy in the how-to processes. We've already been filming uh, a lot of stuff, uh, and we're going to launch that uh, here before long. So having said that, uh, for Matt Mormon, I'm Todd Cooperwriter. Thanks, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks.